Hello friends, welcome you in Research Needs. In this video, we will see how to calculate wound area contraction day by day. So, in this video, we can see here, it is the title of the uh, study. And uh, these are the groups, five groups. And here you can see the day, that day we have measured the wound area. So, in that we have minimum and maximum. Now we are taking average of this wound. So we will write here average. We will take average of these two readings. You can see it is uh, now calculated. We will drag for all. It is simply calculated the average of these two readings for single wound. And uh, now we will add here mean and SCM. So I am showing this just because uh, we are going to calculate wound area contractions means day by day what will be the result we will see and accordingly we can calculate the percentage wound area contraction by that we can easily guess how percent means 100 percent earlier uh, day first the disease was and then it is reducing. So, by that you can easily guess that how the medicine is curing the wound. So, its uh, diameter will be reduced. So, here you can see how I calculate as SEM and uh, you can see the formula. Standard deviation then the all reading we have to take and divided by S2RT and in that bracket count and again in bracket we have to take all the readings. Now you can see uh, we have average and SEM is ready and that we will apply for all the readings means all 25 days readings we have to apply this. So, in this, uh, you can see the wound area contraction measurement we have done for uh, first five days, means uh, without interval, and then we have taken two days interval in uh, all the readings because starting five days we have to calculate the inflammatory phase, in that we have to take regular basis the reading, and then gap of two days we have taken the readings. So th this is how we are doing the wound healing study and uh, now we have to copy it for all the days. So you can see the average of these wound diameters we can easily calculate here. Now we have to calculate the area and uh, I will tell you why we have blank this area and uh, just as per the protocol we are going to take only for 12 days all animals for readings and remaining we will dissect around 4 animals from each groups or 5 animals from each groups after 12 days we will dissect because if you are measuring the inflammatory phase we have to see that inflammatory phase will be over in 5 days and after that the wound will be remain here and in that the phase will be the proliferative phase so we have to record the pro pro in proliferative phase what is the role of inflammatory cytokinins so to record those readings we have to take after 12 days or 15 days when the wound area is reduced up to 50 percent or we have to select pre decide time point where suppose we have taken a wound size 500 mm square for the initial wound for 500 mm and that is reduced up to 250 for specific group disease control. 
that time we have to dissect the 50% of animals and then the remaining we will dissect at the end. We have area, we are going to calculate this. So we will take uh, average of this and divide it by 2. So it will be radius. So pi r square is the formula and that we are going to apply here. So we have an average radius of the wound for every wound. So whatever the uh, red uh, diameter we will divide it by 2 into 3.14. So you can easily see here we have calculated the now we are going to divide it by 2. So it will be easily you can see the exact area it has calculated. So it nearly about 500 mm square. While you cut the animal's wound, that time it will not generate exactly 5 because the skin's elasticity will change the diameter. So now we will paste it for all for all days readings and now you can see we have we have already calculated the areas for all animals. Now here we have ready area of each groups and day wise we can see. So now we are going to calculate it in 2 a and all because there was different time points. These we are calculated by the different time points. So we are going to take here graph. We will paste it here. We will take the values and transpose. Here you can paste the all readings of day. Means one group. And group wise we will collect. You can see the procedure how I am copying this. I speed forward it so that it will easily you can see group wise I have collected all the readings and uh, next step is I am going to paste these readings in graphite prism to make a 2A ANOVA graph so that is why we are going to take 2A ANOVA if it is a uh, single days protocol and uh, in that protocol we are taking one way ANOVA but in two ANOVA we will taking multi time points so these are the groups now we will place here this uh, data into the graphite prism so we have started the graphite prism and all the group wise I am going to paste here it is a disease control. Next, we will take a um, standard group, and then these are the our concentrations of the. So that we have to paste now. From here, one by one, we will copy and paste here. Now our uh, graph is ready, and we will add the number of animals we have used. Now we will calculate the graph. These are the option by which you can prepare a graph for 2A ANOVA. Here we have to check whether the, uh, our readings have a significant effect or not or our drug has significant effect or not. For that we have to choose uh, the significant level. So that we will color the day voice. The changes we have to see how do we have to choose the significant level in this, how to make the graph and how to calculate the it is uh, whether our drug is showing significant or not.
many of my videos I have shown into an hour how to see those so I speed forward this part also here we will see while we have to add the day wise details we have to add the day wise detail over here so that you can easily now you have to see the changes in the graph again we will calculate those and we have colored the area where we have to see the significant level so it, it will calculate it again and show you again we have to color those part that was we have seen that there was no significant and uh, where it has shown significant we will see those part so now we will see this part it has shown the significant level only and other group they have no significant so we will create the graph wound area contractions we will take the y and x axis and now we will color the whole graph it's up to you what color you choose in the groups now our graph is ready you can see here the our standard is showing results and uh, J5 is showing significant effect and uh, from disease control it is showing significant result but others groups there is no significant changes at all so here the wound area contractions I have taken the result from it was completely randomly so you can't see the significant result over here but this is how we can calculate the wound area contractions I wanted to show so this is how the data is prepared now our graph is ready for wound area contractions Thank you very much for watching Research Needs. Please subscribe for more wound healing videos. Please check the description box for more wound healing videos.